Now you've understood why the most common obi tying otaiko musubi is so big. But this musubi knot is just one of the few hundred ways that exist today. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. One of the things that's probably on your list of things you want to do in Japan is surely wearing kimono, right? Recently, wearing kimono is getting more and more popular among Japanese people too. However, if you've ever seen someone wearing these special clothes in anime or movies, haven't you ever wondered why is the back of the kimono, the obi belt, so big? So today, I'll explain about the history of the obi belt used to wear kimono and the reason why the back of the obi belt is so huge. Lastly, I will talk about the three major kinds of obi and different ways of tying them. So I hope you can enjoy this video till the end. There are actually more than a few hundred ways of tying obi belts. By watching this video, you'll be able to deepen your understandings towards kimono and learn everything you need to know about obi and make your kimono experience in Japan a hundred times more enjoyable. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. First, let's start by talking about the history of kimono obi. The obi of a modern kimono is a long piece of fabric which is wrapped around the stomach and tied in various ways in the back. But this is not what it has been since ancient times. The obi started to develop during the Muromachi period when the samurai society fully established their power. Before this period, the aristocrats wore hakama and many layers of gorgeous clothes over it, which was the famous Junihitoe to express their power. So the obi was hidden and could not be seen from the outside. However, since samurai were warriors and had more occasions to fight, they wanted practical and functional clothing rather than the flamboyant and ceremonial attire. As a result, the kosode which used to be the underclothes, came to be treated as outerwear. The development of the obi for both men and women began when the obi became visible from the outside. However, until the beginning of the Edo period, the obi was about half the length of the ones today, and the tying methods were still undeveloped with just a simple knot. What led to the development of the long obi we have today and the various ways to tie them. It actually all began from the star actor of the traditional stage art, Kabuki, Kamimura Kichiya. He was an onnagata who played the role of a woman in Kabuki and was very beautiful and had natural talent. Kabuki was one of the most popular entertainments for the commoners at that time. So the actors were like celebrities today and their fashion was admired by women. Kamimura Kichiya invented a fashionable way to tie his obi to be on stage, and it exploded in popularity among women as the Kichiya Musubi. This led to the creation of various obi knots, and the obi became longer and longer to allow being tied in various ways. By the way, not only ordinary women, but also Maiko start to tie long and dangling kinds of obi, which are known as Darari musubi today. This knot is said to be favored by Maiko because it allows them to express feminine softness, beauty, and glamour as the obi hanging behind them draws a soft curve that matches their movements when they dance. So now you've understood how the length and different ways of tying obi have developed through Japanese history. However, the most well-known huge obi knot called the otaiko musubi that you would probably imagine first hadn't shown up in the story yet, right? How did this big square-shaped tie develop? 
This Tang style was born in the late Edo period and was inspired by the geisha of Fukagawa, Tokyo's famous red light district. Geisha are professional entertainers who live in parties with traditional Japanese entertainment, such as dancing and shamisen. The geisha, especially in Fukagawa, were symbols of an ideal woman and were one of the most admired jobs at that time. In 1817, there was a ceremony to commemorate the completion of the Taiko Bridge at a shrine in Tokyo. The Fukagawa geisha who were invited to enlighten the ceremony all came together with a tie shaped into a otaiko musubi that resembled the Taiko Bridge. Compared to the Darari musubi, the Otaiko Musubi requires extra strings and small items to maintain the beautiful square shape in the back. Although the initial reason this tie became popular was because the Fukagawa Geisha were doing it, it eventually became the most common way of tying the obi in the long term because the way it fits the body prevents the obi from getting loose and was beneficial for practical reasons too. Again, Otaiko Musubi was born in the end of the Edo period, so although it is very common today, you can hardly find them in old drawings, such as the traditional ukiyo-e pictures. This means that if you ever see an anime or movie that is based before the end of the Edo period and picks women with this knot, you can understand that it's historically inaccurate. I think it'll be a fun way to watch the shows from this perspective too. Now you've understood why the most common obi tying otaiko musubi is so big. But this musubi knot is just one of the few hundred ways that exist today. So before I end this video, please let me talk about the three major kinds of obi, as well as three different ways to tie them each to further deepen our understanding towards the obi culture today. The three most widely used kinds of obi are 1. Fukuro obi 2. Nagoya obi 3. Hanhaba obi Actually, there's no official standard for each length. They are categorized by the approximate length depending on the matching kimono and the occasion of use. You could even cut the obi to adjust the size depending on the height and thinness of the person wearing it. But then, what exactly are the different occasions that you have to use a certain obi? Let's take a closer look at each obi and three different ways of tying them each. 1. Fukuro obi It is usually used in combination with formal kimono for weddings, receptions, parties, etc. The outer and inner layers are sewn together like a bag, or fukuro in Japanese. Because it is a kind of obi that is often used for celebrations, it is longer and allows various ways of tying for a more gorgeous look. 1. Nijiu daiko The otaiko musubi that has two layers using the long fukuro obi. It wishes for continuous and overlapping joy. 2. Ogi daiko The ogi fan is considered to bring good luck in Japan because the way it spreads open represents prosperity. 3. Fukura suzume. The design of the tie comes from the image of a suzume sparrow that is keeping warm in winter by filling its feathers with air and puffing them out. It is considered to be a lucky charm and wishes for good fortune and prosperity. 2. Nagoya obi. The Nagoya obi is a shorter and lighter version of Fukura obi and is mainly used for everyday kimono. The name comes from the inventor who was the founder of Nagoya Women's University. 1. Ichiju Daiko At a glance, it may be difficult to distinguish, but the Nagoya Musubi is shorter, so there is only one single layer. 2. Ginza Musubi It doesn't require as many items as the Otaiko Musubi, but it is still a fashionable way to tie the obi. The name comes from the town it was invented after the Great War, Ginza. Tokyo. 3. Ribbon Taiko This is a stylish otaiko that might attract others' attentions at parties. 3. Hanhaba Obi 
It can be worn with everyday kimono, including the yukata, and is used in casual situations. When you wear a haori kimono coat over a kimono, a large obi could get in the way. The hanhabo obi was originally used when the back side of the obi was not visible. However, nowadays there are various designs and time methods for the hanhabo obi too. One, bunko musubi. This is the most common way of tying a hanhabo obi. In the past, this knot was tied by women in samurai families. Bunko means book because the ribbon on the top looks like an opened book. Two, karuta musubi. Because it is flat, it is a practical knot that does not bulge when you lean on a chair or wear a haori. It is very easy to tie and is recommended for beginners. Three, miyako musubi. This is a knot that has a mature and glamorous atmosphere and can be used for festivals or parties. By the way, it is not exactly decided that this musubi knot can only be done with this obi, as long as the length is sufficient and you are wearing it in the right situation. You are free to choose what tie design with what type of obi. Which obi and ways of tying were your favorite? Please let me know in the comments. Then lastly, today's conclusion. The development of obi belts started during the Romaji period when the obi that were originally hidden became visible from the outside in the process of making the fashion more functional for the samurai. The Kibuki actor Kamimura Kichiya created the trend of tying fashionable obi knots and that's when the obi became longer and different knots began to be invented. The most famous obi musubi known today, Otaiko musubi, first became popular thanks to the Fukagawa Geisha tying them for an event to celebrate the completion of the Taiko Bridge of a shrine in Tokyo. Today, it is still the most common way of tying the obi because it doesn't easily get used and is beneficial for practical reasons too. The three most well-used kinds of obi are 1. Fukuro obi Generally used in combination with formal kimono for weddings, receptions, and parties. 2. Nagoya obi a shorter and lighter version of the fukurobi and is mainly used with everyday kimono. 3. Hanhaba obi, an obi that can be worn with everyday kimono, including the yukata, and is used in casual situations. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you thought, wow, you can tie them in so many different ways with just one this piece of fabric, that is just simply amazing. Please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And please check out our sub channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. So in today's video, I only talked about the women's obi, yes, but there are of course um, different ways of tying the obi for men as well. But we only usually use the kaku obi, yes, which is much, much smaller and shorter, yes. But um, there are actually different ways of tying the men's um, obi too. So I hope in the future I'll be able to make a video introducing the different ways of uh, musubi tying for the men kimono too. I hope you can look forward to that.